Hello Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to the channel. So I've just finished watching the CitizenCon livestream, and as usual, I was completely blown away. So in today's video, I really wanted to give you a quick overview of the event in case you weren't able to watch the stream live, or for some reason you don't have time to watch it in its entirety on Twitch. So, let's jump in, shall we? So we started the stream with Sandy tearfully reading us a heartfelt letter she wrote to the backers. In the letter she thanked us for our support to the project and the kindness offered following some of the personal texts against her and her family recently. It was really touching to watch, but it also immediately started the RSI chat on fire. A lot of people, including myself, thought that she was announcing her departure from CIG. But, luckily for us, that was not the case. Afterwards, Chris took the stage and showed us a video compilation of the evolution of Star Citizen over the past three years. We got to see a lot of familiar faces and old footage and some of the milestones that really brought about, well, at least for me, a pretty good sense of nostalgia. Moving on, Chris started talking about the near future with Patch 1.3 showing off the two new size 4 weapons that will be available in that patch very soon. He then moved on to AC 2.0, which, as we know, will be the uh, actually the Persistent Universe Alpha. Uh, he then showed us a live demo of the patch, which shows just how big the so-called mini-PU really is. So let me give you a quick breakdown of the demo and what's going to be coming with AC 2.0 or Alpha 2.0, or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, there's going to be three major spaceports, and bear with me if I, if I get these names wrong. The first is Port Olesar, and this is where we'll enter the universe from one of 64 bunk rooms on board of the station. Uh, the station is basically a larger version of the one we saw during the Gamescom presentation. But from there, we'll be able to call up one of our ships, which will be placed on any of the 10 landing pads available. And from there, we'll head out into the verse. Uh, we'll also likely be able to pick up a few missions, probably one of the 38 different missions that are going to launch with the patch. And those mi missions are going to range from fighting pirates to basic exploration. In the second part of the demo, they took us to one of eight communications arrays that dot the map. Here they fought off a few pirates, and then, using EVA mechanics, entered the array and brought it back online. This apparently opens up more nav points for our ships to jump to. During the battle with the pirates, the Constellation took some damage, so they showed us one of the many rearming and refueling stations. Upon landing on the pad at the station, several drones began repairing the ship, and it was kind of a simplistic repair system, but Chris kind of assured us that it will be expanded upon in the future in later releases. And it's actually going to become a pretty major mechanic for players as well. After the repair process was complete, they jumped to Security Post Korea. Now, I, that's not the country Korea. It's actually spelled K-A-R-E-A-H. Uh, anyway, this abandoned space station is where the bulk of the FPS action will take place in the PU Alpha. Players are going to fight to control the station so that they can mine data and unlock new missions. Unfortunately, the marine pilots that were flying the Constellation and Hornet were killed on the station, and the pirates, who were being played by the opposing developer team, went outside and stole their Constellation. But before closing the demo, they opened up the navigation menu to show us just how many nav points are actually available. And uh, it looks like there's going to be at least 20 or so points to find and explore within the two quadrillion square kilometers of map space. Another location that was discussed but not actually shown was the Kovalix shipping hub. Now this is a logistics station that has apparently suffered a catastrophic accident and is now a derelict. Chris hinted that we may be able to find some pretty interesting items if we go there. All in all, this looks like it's going to be a pretty amazing addition to the game, and I really can't wait to jump in and explore every nook and cranny. 
Hopefully by the time we've found just about everything inside, they'll start to release new content, such as new systems like mining and cargo hauling, and eventually maybe even a whole new system or two to jump to and explore. For the next portion of the stream, they showed us the ARC star map. Now the star map has just gone live to the website, and eventually we'll be able to actually access it from in-game via our Moby Glass or your ship's nav computer. Now Turbulent has really outdone themselves on this one. The map looks absolutely amazing, and it runs fairly well on the web platform. Of course, there's a bit of lag right now as there are a lot of people checking it out right now. Um, as I said, this is right after the stream that I'm doing this. But after just a cursory exploration, I've found that pretty much the Stanton, the Sol, and the Terra Nova system are probably the most complete systems, at least currently. Obviously in Stanton, the area around Crusader is the most populated, as this is the only system that's almost complete. It's the one they showed us in this demo. It shows all the point of, points of interest I referred to earlier, including the stations, the communication arrays, and all the other points in the map. So overall the map looks really nice and it's really quite functional as well. You're currently able to place bookmarks on systems that interest you and even plan, plan routes through known jump points. Now when you're planning a route it currently takes into account only the size of your ship. But in the future you'll have even more options. You'll be able to choose say the fastest route or the most fuel efficient route or the safest route. And you'll even be able to mark certain systems to avoid entirely. Moving on to the next portion of the stream, they gave us a glimpse of the Million Mile High Club for early backers, and an update on the SciTech entry-level joystick. They also talked a bit about the new CCU system, which is currently live on the website, and the new referral system, where you can earn rewards by recruiting your friends to Star Citizen. The next big reveal was the Aegis Saber concept sale. This ship will be Aegis's answer to the Hornet. It's about the same size, but will sacrifice some weapon mounts for agility. It looks like it's, it'll be able to mount, at the moment, two size 3 fixed weapons on the wings and two size 2 gimbaled weapons on the nose. Of course, you'll be able to load up just four size 3 as long as they're fixed, uh, so it can still pack quite a big punch. Uh, I'll likely do a separate video on the Sabre later as I'm really excited for this ship. It, I may even end up melting my Super Hornet just to get one. It's that cool and I'm that much of a fan of Aegis ships. Along with the Sabre, they revealed a military ship sale. So for a limited time, the Vanguard Warden, Starfarer Gemini, Gladiator, Super Hornet, Gladius, and Retaliator are all on sale in the Pledge Store. And in celebration of Star Citizen's third anniversary, they all come with three years of standard hull insurance. Now along with the sale, there's a new ship pack that is available today and Sunday only, the Armada pack. And it comes with all the ships I just mentioned, along with the Sabre and an Idris P frigate. Now the package weighs in at about $2,500, and I was severely tempted to melt all my ships and buy the pack, but in the end I decided against it. After all, I, I do need something to work towards in the, when the game actually releases, and the Idris and Pegasus will likely be my in-game goals. For the next portion of the stream, they revealed the new Squadron 42 trailer, which showed off a crazy level of fidelity that they're going for in the game's main characters. In the trailer we see Admiral Bishop, who is played by Gary Oldman by the way, address the UEE and declare war on the Van Duel following the attack on the Vega system. This of course kicks off the Squadron 42 campaign. Now the trailer was pretty epic, showing off some very high quality facial animations, but the end of the trailer contained the biggest surprise of the evening the Squadron 42 cast. Now the list included several A-list actors and actresses, including none other than Mark Hamill. So it looks like that trip to the UK was for a Star Citizen shoot after all. Other notable cast members include Mark Strong, 
Andy Serkis, Liam Cunningham from Game of Thrones, uh, the lovely Rona Mitra, and even Gillian Anderson from X-Files. And finally, Chris ended the stream by showing us a demo of the still work in progress opening of Squadron 42. In the demo, we see our character's introduction to their first assignment aboard an Idris named the UEE Stanton. In the demo, we get a tour of the Idris's amazing interior, and we're introduced to some of the crew as well. After the tour, I was, I was really tempted to buy one of the Armada packs just for the Idris, but as you know, I've been able to resist so far. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. Well, Star Citizens, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and or share it with your friends. And if you're watching this and you decide to make your very first pledge to Star Citizen, please do me a big favor and use my referral code, which can be found in the description of the video below. Once again, this has been Buzzkiller, and I'll see you guys in the verse.